This has got to be the scariest day of the trip so far. And it was not fun. The day when we actually feared for our lives for the first time. The day when I felt guilty for doing something stupid. Even talking about it now gets me kind of anxious and, and scared because it was totally not what we were expecting. And although it was a pretty horrible experience, every other day of the trip so far has been absolutely wonderful and we've only met amazing people. So I really don't want this story to scare people off, but this story, I think we need to share just just to warn others out there going through this certain place in Mexico that isn't the safest right now. I need a flyer, Mikhail. Please. Mikhail, you don't understand what we're in very dangerous situation. Now we are finally ready. We are leaving the very nice town of San Cristobal de las Casas, which is probably one of the best we've seen in Mexico so far. It's really beautiful. Just it. Yeah, it's a lot of um, old colonial buildings, a lot of really nice cafes and museums, and churches. Turn right. Yep, and, and we are heading to right. Palenque, which is super famous as well. Turn left. Here we go. Ready, Taco? Let's do this. <laughs> Just got some hitchhikers. Muerte un poquito. Queremos amigos nuevos. We picked up two Mexican hitchhikers along the way, which were a lovely couple. Everyone was in a really good mood. We were all happy. We were singing, exchanging stories, laughing. And we knew that the road there was a bit of a tricky one. Not only was it unsafe from being winding and in a bad shape but it also had some roadblocks along the way. We had read on Isle Velanda warning from all the travellers who had been through them but mostly they were asked for money and they were let through. So we knew that something might come um, but we weren't, <laughs> we actually had no idea that it would be something as crazy as what ended up happening to us. We got to a spot on the road that was in a little town called Ocosingo, in between San Cristobal and Palenque, in the mountains of Chiapas, where there was a few cars stopped in front of us and there was a big sign up on an archway. Cassette de cobro por incumplimiento problema del estado. And so we were like, okay, this might be what everyone was talking about on Aya Valanda thought, okay, we'll probably just have to stop and pay. However, I had the GoPro in my hand and I was trying to film everything. And unfortunately, the group of men that were at this roadblock weren't very happy about that. They immediately got pretty violent. <laughs> So they started banging the sides of the car and telling us to stop filming. We did stop filming, but that did not slow them down. So the whole thing just scaled up pretty quickly into some pretty tense and stressful interaction. I wouldn't say discussion because I don't even think we got to talk to them. And we just got totally freaked out. We had no idea what was going on. I stopped filming, which I wish I hadn't, um, but we still had the dash cam running, which was pretty cool. But I just remember that in the background behind these guys who were close to us, I saw one guy who looked like the main guy say something like, stop the car and get them out. And then as I looked through my mirror, I could see this person carrying a big piece of log with nails through it, which would obviously go under our car and stop us from moving forward. 
So immediately I just thought like, I don't want them to get me out of my car in this scenario here. And I have to get out of here before that piece of log makes it under my tires. So my natural reaction was just to put my foot down throttle and just smash it. Which probably was a stupid decision, but at back then it was just what I had to do. But not quite in time. Um, we're not sure if one or two of the wooden boards with the nails under it actually got stuck underneath probably the back right wheel and the front left wheel. Um, and the back right wheel actually had the piece of plank stuck in between the wheel and the tyre. Um, but he didn't stop driving, he just knew that we needed to get out, there, out of there as quick as possible. We had no idea if they were going to pull us out of the car and, and hurt us or kidnap us or kill us or who knows what. We, I still don't like to think about it. And at that point we're just panicking like what are we going to do, how long, how long is it going to take for the tyre to completely deflate. We've got to get as far as we can before that happens. So we just drove as fast as we could out of there and tried to get as far as we could before the wheel actually deflated entirely. And we got, I don't know, maybe about 15 k's or 20 k's before it came to the point where we heard the rim of the wheel was getting damaged and if we went further with the wheel deflated, we're gonna, we're gonna break something. And at that point, I just called Michaela and said, Michaela, we just have to change the tire as soon as we can and keep moving. It's adventure for you guys. It was totally stupid what I did, but it did not feel nice to be there. I just remember that being the most stressful part of the trip there because it was raining, it was totally muddy. Um, we were both shaken. We were really scared. We didn't know if someone was going to come down the road from behind us um, with hammers and guns. Seriously, we, we had no idea what was going on and we just knew we had to be as quick as we could and just get out of there. Are you okay, boy? I need a polite on again. Please, Mikhail, you don't understand what you are. We're in very dangerous situation. Yeah, And we did it really quickly, I think in less than five minutes we had it replaced. But as we were just about to drop the jack and keep going... A community police car rocked up and there was three guys in it, I think one of them was wearing a mask and, um, and they were pretty scary. And they were clearly from that crowd so they came to me and they just said, what the hell have you done? And Alex, I could see, was he was the one who was dealing with these guys and he was really just defending us and trying to tell, tell them that we had no idea what was going on, we felt unsafe, we just knew that we needed to get out of there because we, f we were fearing for our lives, literally. He told them we can pay, you know, if there was a fee that we were supposed to pay, we can pay it now, you know. And I just stood my ground and I told that to him and they, they threatened to take me back to the crowd and let the crowd decide what they would do to me, which I clearly didn't want to happen. So um, the guys wanted 500 pesos, which is like $40 or something, and I think we only had 200 pesos in the car. So we said, look, we can give you 200 pesos, and thankfully they were like, okay, but you just need to get out of here, and we're like, yeah, we know. So we gave them this 200 pesos, we got the jack off and we just got out of there. So we still have 121 kilometers to drive to Palenque. The atmosphere in the car is just horrible. Full on silence and we all feel pretty anxious. Don't do that guys. Be warned when you see something like that, just stop, have a smile. Whatever they charge you. Pay the corrupt guys Pay who extorted us. Part of traveling. Keep safe. 
and then our front left tire started deflating as well. What happened, boy? Today's not our lucky day. Just had two flat tires in one day, and this is not looking good. We could fix it here, but it's getting too dark, and I just think it's a bad idea if we pump it up. It doesn't seem to be leaking too fast, and we make it to the campsite, and then we just figure it out tomorrow. What luck we had today! Today has been a tough day. We finally arrived, guys. That was a very long drive, very stressful day, a very interesting day. Thank God we're here. Tomorrow we can have a hopefully relaxing day. <laughs> you know, we're just so glad that it all ended up okay. Not sure what would have happened if I didn't smash it through, if it would have been a better idea or a worse idea. We just got to know recently that the two guys from Europe were riding through that exactly same spot and they were murdered. If you guys are heading that way, I would ask you to be extremely careful about what you're doing. Just make sure you do your research, that you drive at the proper time and that you don't film when you go through those roadblocks. The experience was not nice, but it definitely won't stop us from doing what we love and continuing the trip. Because honestly, it was just one moment in two years, literally one tiny little moment in two years that we had any problems. Um, and the rest of our trip has been absolutely wonderful. It's a reality check that sometimes you need, I guess. And I hope you guys never have to go through something like that. The majority of the people we've met so far during this trip have been absolutely amazing. Mexico was such a great country and we love the experience here. So continue traveling. Just do that as smart as you can and be safe. Don't be disencouraged by this video guys. I promise that the rest of our videos are a lot funner, happier. You know, all of the adventures we've had so far have been amazing. So check out those other videos as well and see that overlanding really is an awesome life. Subscribe to our channel so you can see the awesome videos that we've got coming up as well. And if you really enjoy watching our videos and see the value in them, please consider supporting us on Patreon. I'll put this link here. It'll help us continue creating really cool content for you guys. All right, I think that's about it guys. We'll see you next week.